So, <clears throat> February update. Fortes Fortuna Advil. Edivia. Eduvat. I don't know. I'll, I'll stop butchering it. As you can see, we have the beautiful Brandenburg here. What I believe is Tirpitz and Bismarck in the background. The update will take place on the 31st. Okay. Captain, the first update of 2022 is around the corner. A solid batch of new content, including ships of all sorts and colors, awaits you. Let's check it out. Alright, so TLDR for anybody who watches this video. Um, if you're not going to go through all the in-depth stuff with me, here's basically the basics. So the Italian battleships are arriving with SAP secondary. They do not have semi-armor piercing shells for their main guns. They still have AP and HE, but their secondaries are SAP. Azure Lane returns for Wave 3 of Collaboration. Very excited about that. There are some ships and commanders in there that I'm looking to snag. And God Almighty. The time has finally arrived. After almost three years, three years, cross-platform divisions and friends lists are coming to World of Warships Legends. Praise be to God, it has finally happened. Also, we have three new maps, which we will get to later. As you can see, I have tabs up here. Dual ranked, something I'm also very excited about. Five seasons of 1v1 fights in ranked. Next, the first aircraft carrier rolls into the bureau alongside Minotaur. And if you're not going to, like I said, if you're not going to watch this whole video, let's just say the Kido Butai sends their regards. Then the permanent costs for some tier 6 premium ships has been reduced. That's going to. Make some people happy and make some people who already had those premiums kind of sad. And then, of course, the Lunar New Year celebration brings some fascinating time because it is the year of the tiger. Coincidence? I think not, but, but, you know. Also, you have a nice little goodie code here. <clears throat> Excuse me, goodie code here. Just for some camos and a common crate. So, first, the Italian battleships in early access. Are you brave? Because early access Italian battleships are only for courageous captains. You can get any of the four listed below in dedicated Italian battleship regular and big crates. The guarantee system is active for the big ones. And they a ship drops at least once per 20 containers. So it still sucks that you can't just get the ships off the rip. But that's how early access works. We've seen this before. Uh, the tier 4 premium battleship Giulio. Cesare is also coming back in the big crates. And the Vittorio Veneto will be arriving in the next update. So expect to see a lot of Dante Alighieri's, Cavours, Dorias, and Caracciolos. Of which I am most excited to play the Caracciolo. Because that's the ship I currently am at on PC. It's got 16 inch guns, I believe. It's it's a pretty decent boat. Same with the tier 3 Dante Alighieri. Tier 4, Conte di Cavour, Tier 5, Andrea Doria, and Tier 6, Francesco Caracciolo. By the way, as a quick side note, the Conte di Cavour, the Giulio Cesare, is actually one of these class of battleships, and even though it has the World War One era superstructure, the Giulio Cesare, what they did is they cut off her bow, they shortened her together, they added torpedo protection, and updated her superstructure. So she is the same class of ship, but modernized. So, the new line brings a new mechanic. Semi-AP shells for secondary battery guns. Not for main guns. For secondary battery guns. These new shells deal high damage when penetrating armor, and no damage in case of ricochets and no penetration. Sap shells do not cause fires or splash damage, and due to destination on contact, they're unlikely to score citadel hits. Now, I do believe that... Well, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see when the update drops, but I'm pretty sure that this is only the case for some of the higher caliber main guns, potentially. And they still leave the 90 millimeter secondaries with the HE that just has a 5% fire chance and they can't pen anything. So maybe you can have a bit of both, but we'll we'll have to see when the update comes out. If you're looking to into further expanding your region of marina on ships, don't 
Press the discount on Italian premiums during the first week of the update. There's, of course, some icing on the cake. All new Cruiser Garizio, which we will get to later. While the robot is coming back, which will be obtainable for 750,000 global XP. That is a stab in the gut, Wargaming. That is a stab in the gut for me specifically. Because I bought the big crates, the Santa crates, to get Roma and Bliss Bosca. And I bought 40 of them. Actually, no, I bought like 60 of them. And I got those two. But you're telling me if I would have just waited one month, I could have spent no money. Just grinded through all the arena season and just spent the global that I had now. Ugh. Alright. Azure Lane returns with Wave 3. Prepare the weeaboos. <laughs> So the wait is over. The reinforcements are here. The new update brings a third wave of our collaboration with Azure Lane, available from February 7th. This time, the content batch includes six commanders with unique voiceovers, three ships, and the same number of skins, plus a couple of all-new flags. The commanders are available for both standalone and through special crates. So, the commanders are Eagle Union, USS, uh, US Montpelier, so that's a Cleveland class, Sakura Empire, the Azuma, Shokaku and Yukikaze, so that's cruiser, carrier, and destroyer. Northern Parliament, which is the Soviet Union. We have Aurora. And then the Sardinia Empire, we have the Latorio. The ships and skins are connected to the same characters. The ships arrive with the likes of Cleveland class, Montpelier, uh, the Yukikaze for Yukikaze, obviously, and Aurora. While the skins are presented by Azuma, Shokaku, and Latorio. The Latorio skin it goes with the Roma. Which of course is coming back to the store for global. Importantly, two ships are different from their prototypes, which is very similar to what they did with Azure Lane Baltimore. So, if you don't know, Azure Lane Baltimore for some reason reloads faster than the normal Baltimore does. That's the only difference I can make out between the two, but you know, having an 8.2 second reload on a Baltimore is pretty fun. So, Montpelier turns quicker but shoots slower than Cleveland. And Yukikaze differs by something by betting on her own main guns. They traverse and reload faster, while her torpedoes have increased range, but are slower and easier to spot. So, that means if you follow in the way of PG Rapids, and you like using your Yukikaze as a mixed gunboat slash torpedo boat, the Yukikaze is going to be a step above. All things Aurora are, are available through a dedicated free bundle, so make sure to check your respective store for that free bundle to pop up. And you get the ship for free, the commander, for free, and the flag for free, and you get a special mission, special mission that offers the commander herself as a reward. <sighs> Next, the Pride of Prussia campaign. Last from January 31st to the first week of March. 100 levels, 5 weeks of missions. Obviously you get Brandenburg, the patches. Uh, you get... Commander crates, obviously Italian big crates, some doubloons, some premium time. Four commendations is pretty nice. Four insignias is also pretty nice. Yeah, three million credits, plenty of commander and global XP, lots of camos, plenty of boosters. The headliner of our latest campaign, German Tier 7 premium battleship Brandenburg, is close to the Bismarck class but has more guns, coming in in total with the 12 pieces of 12 inches. She also has more secondary turrets, that's a lot of firepower. Now, before we divert, on PC, Brandenburg is a Tirpitz hull with Odin guns, and she reloads in 32 to like 33 seconds. Now, while I was getting ready to start the stream up, they did make a change. If we go to the official Discord here. As you can see, Blip has announced that Brandenburg has been buffed since we showed her in livestream, thanks largely to super tester feedback. Secondary range has increased from 5 kilometers to 7 kilometers. Main guns reload from 32 seconds to 26.5 seconds. So it's not going to be easy to Odin on reload, but it's not going to be like Kansas levels of reload. So that's that's a great change right there. And then speed. 28 knots to 32.5 knots. So she's actually going to be pretty fast. This actually kind of gets me really excited. So we'll see what happens there. Obviously, get all, all these goodies. Get 15,730 doubloons without backing, and then 69,955 doubloons worth of stuff with backing. 
And there it is, boys. Cross-play division. Cross-platform divisions and friend lists. You no longer need to persuade your friend which console is superior just because you want them to play with you. We're introducing cross-platform divisions and, of course, friends lists. Those are going to work exactly the same way as they currently do, but just make your friends from the other side eligible to add so you can play together. So it just looks like your friends list is going to get even bigger. Please note that this feature does not cover mobile devices, of course, because mobile is mobile. 1v1 ranked. 1v1. No carriers. Five seasons with the ship tiers ascending each season from 3 to 7. Great prizes, including steel. That's all. Get out there and prove you're the best duelist. Importantly, the ship type matching will allow for any combination, so you can absolutely get matched in a cruiser against a battleship or a destroyer. Now, some people may not like this. Some people may think this is dumb. But I think it's actually a great choice, because the way that you play 1v1 ranked, as someone who has played it before on PC, the way you play 1v1 ranked is brawling. You need to take the cap, you need to get up close, you do not want to be sitting back and spamming. So anything that is a dedicated HG spammer or like anything that has smoke, it, it, it's not going to work because you need something to spot for you in order to take advantage of that. In 1v1, you, you're, not, you're spotting for yourself. So for instance, Amalfi is going to suffer. If not, you should straight up avoid Amalfi because her only spotting is that, is that patrol fighter. But if you're trying to fight an enemy cruiser that can just sit outside of its spotting range, there's no point. So, it is a little dumb, considering how some destroyers can just get absolutely low levels of concealment and just YOLO you. So, Turpits and Bismarck are looking like they're going to be strong. Same thing with Odin. Anything with secondary-focused main guns on a battleship is going to be very good. Um, Edinburgh looks like she'll be very good. I think Hipper and Prince Oigan are going to take the, take the cake when it comes to the best cruisers for the Tier 7 1v1s. Um, Destroyers, we'll see what happens. I'll I'll make a video when the, the seasons come out, just going over all the ships to play and like which ones are good and which ones aren't. All right, you can either try to maximize your ship's built-in proficiency and make sure you're always on top with a disadvantage type, or go for a balanced survival build that might have some answers for all comers. Expect in range, expect detailed information that can be real come down the line in blog posts. Double bureau reshuffle. The Kido, Bu the Kido Butai adds another member. So the HMS Minotaur powered us through the holiday update, and now it's time to take the rightful place among the Bureau projects. If you already own the cruiser from the campaign, your final project reward will be delivered in the form of 50 million credits. So if you already have Mino, you can start the Bureau project and get all the goodies that come with it, and then at the end of it, you also get 50 million credits. So if you're short on credits, not, not, a, not, a, not a bad choice. However, it's not the only new project in our research center. Bid your warmest welcome to the first Bureau aircraft carrier, the Tier 7 Kaga, was an essential part of the Marquis Kido Butai battle group of the Japanese Navy. With her bigger squadrons, she's certainly worth a try if you want to fill the skies with aircraft. So, let's see, can we open this in a new tab? We can. So, no, it's not much better. So, Kaga on PC, I forget her actual squadron size, but I believe it is in the realm of 15 per squadron. So she is an absolute, they're going to definitely tweak it for Legends, but holy crap, this ship has giant squadrons, but I mean, <laughs> look at the size of this thing, it, it's an absolute gi giant target, I, I believe her concealment is going to be worse than that of like Lexington and Parzival, so we'll see what happens with Gaga. The Lunar New Year celebrations, the year of the tiger is here, and to honor the noble symbol of the turning calendar, We've introduced two theme skins, Courage for Lo Yang and Fury for Huang He. And yes, Huang He is the new pan Asian ship. You can find more details about the only premium cruiser in the next section. Dragon, of course, represents the tiger, and he sent yellow and blue dragons as a sign of appreciation. It's a little in advance, but still a small sign of good intentions goes a long way. So, of course, these two ships will be available until the end of the update, Lo Yang and Huang but else you'll probably need something to use the skin with, so it's time to prepare Lo Yang for arriving for GXP. This is another stab in the heart war gaming. Lo Yang was the campaign ship not but three months ago, and she's already coming back for global. So for all of us who bought the Lo Yang, like people who got the freezing for the Shiyar Daka, but all of us Chad Unicums who bought the Lo Yang because of her strong hydro, 
it's just a stab in the gut because now we we wasted basically 70 bucks if we would have just waited for three months but she is going to leave the store at the end of the update so that that is pretty good so new ships of the update huang he as you can see it is basically it, it's not the same as an exeter but it is very similar to an exeter she's got the I forget, it's like the london townhouse superstructure i forget exactly what it's called She's got the six uh, 652 millimeter main guns and torpedoes. Huang He is a Pan Asian Tier Five Freeman cruiser with smoke generator, torpedo reload booster, and a couple of other consumables to choose from. From now on, she represents the only option to try out high, a higher tier Pan Asian cruiser with 6.6 .6 inch 152 millimeter guns and torpedoes, as well as a wide choice of consumables, including smoke generator, sonar, torpedo reload booster, and defensive AA. However, the last three occupy the same slot. So you can have smoke by itself, and then choose between sonar, torpedo reload booster, and defensive AA. So, in reality, sonar is going to be your best bet. Torpedo reload booster might be interesting to try out, but defensive AA is pointless. So this ship is truly going to be flexible. Gorizia, an Italian tier 6 heavy cruiser of the Zog class. Gorizia boats pretty good armor, and due to the Washington Treaty, she lacks torpedo armament, but has access to the exhaust smoke generator or defensive AA, but I don't know why you would pick defensive AA over exhaust smoke. Sonar and a catapult fighter, which makes her a very versatile counter cruiser or to a lesser extent an anti aircraft. So, pretty decent destroyer hunter and cruiser dealer, but having sonar and Italian cruiser with the 8 inch guns is pretty nice. So, I might pick up Gorizia day one and try her out. Alright, then the hearts, gold, and silver ninja contest. Special bonuses for the first win of the update playing each ship from tier 4 to legendary tier will arrive in the form of hearts. Celebrate Valentine's Day by showing your affection to legends. The following bonuses are going to be available from February 14th through the 21st. So tier 4 ships, camos, tier 5 ships, 1000 global XP, so it looks like I'm playing all 55 of my tier 5s again to get free 50k global XP. Tier 6 ships, one Italian battleship crate, so once again I'll play all my all 69 tier ships, tier 6 ships to get 69 crates. Tier 7 ships, one promotion order, and legendary ships, one winter big crate. Additionally, we will have permanently set the cost of all existing and upcoming tier ship tier 6 premium ships to 12,500 doubloons, thus decreasing it from the cost of 15,000 doubloons that it was in place for some earlier released ships. Compensation for acquiring the duplicate was set to 18.75 million credits. So these are all the ships that are subject to change. So Atlanta, Boise Kid, Ashitaka, Sharnhorse, Materable, and Charlemagne. Of all of these, Atlanta, Kid, Sharnhorse, and Charlemagne are the ones that you would really want to buy. Everything else is just kind of a collector's ship, but Atlanta and Kid are probably the strongest, and then Charlemagne's close second, and the Sharnhorse is just fun. One more thing to keep the eye on is the Silver Ninja Contest, starting February 7th. Send us your best screenshots from this update for a chance to win a ship of your choice from a selected list and a boatload of credits with patches and a special flag for all participants. We will select five winners from with your help, one overall winner and one winner from each ship from each ship type category, four categories in total. So I might be tryharding this, because you know I have all but eleven ships in the game. And maybe just maybe if they put a certain tier seven premium ship on the winner, <coughs> Wichita. They, they won't do that, but still, that could be pretty nice. So make sure to keep your cameras ready in case anything epic happens. Maps. Three new maps right up to Tier 6, Tier 7, and Legendary Tier Battles. Islands of Ice, Shatter, and Warrior's Path. So here's Islands of Ice. This is just the standard domination mode. You can see we have an A cap, B cap, and C cap. So it looks like C cap is going to be great for radar cruisers because you can just charge up this flank or go wide and then sit right here and just radar the entire cap. B cap looks like it's going to be the most critical because of the amount of islands you really need to utilize this. Like great crossfire positions in here. Yeah, Islands of Ice looks good. And then we have Shatter. Now Shatter is an interesting map. So this obviously is the clan battles game mode, but normally you have an A cap right here, B cap in the center, and then C cap right here on this island. So in reality, A cap is the priority for shatter you need to take a cap because see like if a d if a dd gets on the cap and you're contesting it for a long time 
it, there's no way to really push them out even with radar because you have these two giant islands blocking line of sight. So you really need to take A cap first and then B and then just mop up on C. But yeah, it looks like a very good place for fighting on the flanks with the middle being a great brawling space. Just yeah, be careful. Make sure you take A before doing anything. And then we have Warrior's Path, which is the one I'm probably the most excited about. This is one of my favorite maps on PC. So A, you have a lot of little islets. B, you have a great open ground in the middle. And C, you have two big islands in the middle. So if you can push up here and just get crossfires across the map, because again, just setting up great crossfire positions, it's great. Also going out wide in the flank, get your long range HE spam, which everybody hates, but it's, it's a good angle to hold. So islands of ice, shatter, and Warrior's Path. Moreover, domination scenarios are added to Greece and Hotspot. So, get new domination modes for Greece and Hotspot. Balance changes. We have the Wooster. The legendary light American cruiser was often dismissed for her performance because it didn't feel up to par with what Cleveland could achieve at Tier 7. As her popular popularity has continued to wane, we thought we might just try doing something dramatic. Let's see if we have overdone it. Look at all the green, son. Look at it all. Look at that. Ooh, baby, that looks good. So, main battery reload time decreased from 6 to 4.6 seconds. That is stock. With Mimbelli and Ding, you could probably get close to a 4, if not under under 4 second reload. That's nuts. And fire setting chances for HE shells increased from 10 to 12%, so even better HE fire chance. HE shell penetration increased from 25 to 30 millimeters. So these represent the raw pen values, which must be greater than the armor you're hitting by one millimeter to penetrate. This means that Wooster can now effectively pen 29 millimeters of armor with your HE shells. So you still will need um, uh, IFHE or what's it called? Equilibrium of power to really pen most battleships at legendary tier, but you can still pen their superstructures a little bit easier now. Turning circle radius decreased by 10 meters. Not really that much of a difference, but it's okay. Radar reload time decreased from 180 seconds to 120 seconds, so she now has an even faster radar reload, and her shell grouping has increased by 2.5%. So Wooster, look out. Wooster could be a monster in disguise this update. Alaska. A large American cruiser was getting up there in performance, and the decision to dial her back was made quite some time ago. Satch. We've seen even more of a bump in performance during the last three seasons of Arena. We attributed this mostly to Alaska. Alaska's accuracy, which, as you can see, is the target of the current map. So her main battery shell dispersion circle increased to about 12% on average. So that just means at any given range, like in one straight line, all the way to her maximum range, her ellipse of where her shells can fall is being increased on about 12%. So this is less dramatic than it looks, with the biggest accuracy hit coming at shorter distances. But that sucks for Alaska because she is a super cruiser. Yes, she has radar, but she only has 9 kilometers of radar. Like, Alaska already struggles to deal with destroyers, because she can only fire two salvos per one radar shard, basically. And now you're telling me that it's going to be even harder to hit targets at closer range. Like, anything from 9 kilometers in is close range. Mid-range is like 11 to like 14, and then long range is anything above that. So Alaska is going to suffer from this. So her AP shell armor piercing has also decreased by 0.5%, and then shell grouping is increased by 2.5%. So they're increasing the grouping, but they're widening the dispersion at all ranges. So that is kind of sad. Germany, the Tier 6 York. So the t German Tier 6 cruiser was always a victim of misunderstanding and having very popular sisters in Nuremberg and Hitler. Mm-hmm. We've already made attempts to make her more of a universal soldier, and here we're giving her another nudge to her AP arsenal in the hope of making her a good choice for a few more captains. So her main battery reload time is being decreased from 10, 12 seconds to 10 seconds, and she gets 500 more AP damage added to her maximum. So I don't really know if that's going to make her that much better, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Soviet Union. Stalingrad. When Stalingrad arrived, she started setting damage records. <coughs> Yours truly. That thankfully didn't get too high up there in average numbers, which is a good indicator considering the caliber of players that currently have her. Huh? 
uh, she started setting damage records that thankfully didn't get too high up there in average numbers, which is a good indicator considering the caliber of players that currently have her. Just, just think about what that that's saying. I, I'm not trying to go too far. But let's think about what that says. The caliber of players that currently have her. Interesting word choice. That said, we're ready to go. We're ready to try and see if those damage spikes can be tempered with a bit. Cut her AP alpha damage as well as give more of a fighting chance to any cruisers that face her by making fires more of a nuisance for the Soviet Juggernaut. So her AP maximum shell damage decreased from 8,500 to 800. This is actually pretty bad when it comes to fighting destroyers because now you won't deal uh, 85, 850 damage. It's not that bad, but it's it's still a reduction in damage you can do with overpens, which kind of hurts when you you're only going to be doing overpen damage with full pens on DD. So you're going to be doing less damage to destroyers. And her fire duration has been increased from 30 to 45 seconds. That is sad. Aircraft carriers increase delay after attack for all dive bombers by one second and decreased attack cooldown for dive bombers by one second so players have more time to observe the results of their bomb attack. Okay. Alright, then bug fixes. Maximum speed marker for exhaust smoke generator no longer shows speeds higher than the maximum. Not really a big deal. Some grade one perma camos failed to display the obtain marker. Um, not really anything big there. Gaja modest turrets now correctly rotate 360 degrees, so that's pretty good. Gajamata can, can now do a little bit better, I guess, against destroyer. Gajas and show commanders bio buttons have been swapped. Okay. Mobile. Don't really care about this. I mean I play mobile, but there's just a lot of a lot of improvements and bug fixes for mobile. And yeah, that's that's about it. So thank you all for Sticking with me, let's celebrate the Year of the Tiger together, and I can't wait to play with everybody on all platforms. So, can't wait to see you all again, and yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.